Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Foe School in Frederick, Maryland, and today I'm going to be talking trials. You've seen some of the plaster videos that I've done, some of the techniques that require the trials, but we really don't really get into the trials. So today that's what I'm going to talk about. And there's a lot of different trials. Now I mainly work with trials made by the company called Pavant out of Italy. They are the green handled trials, these guys. This is the small trial. It's real simple to begin with. They're all stainless steel. It's very high quality stainless steel. And they're also trapezoid shaped. So they kind of get in those little corners a little easier. And not just little corners, but some of the bigger corners. Some of the real big areas. So let's start here. Stainless steel trowel, high quality, which means there's no blue steel or they don't have a lot of carbon in them. So that means when you go across the wall, it doesn't leave white. Or I'm sorry, when you go across the wall using light colored or pastel colored plasters, you don't get bluish gray, dark discoloration. Uh, when you use lower quality trials, something like this guy, they tend to leave marks. Now, these could still leave marks. That's why when we do light colored plasters, we switch them to a different trial altogether. We're going to get that in a second. But to begin with, high quality stainless steel, rounded edges, not square edges. We don't want square edges because they can leave marks in the plaster. And the edges are tapered. What the taper does is when we go to apply the plaster, burnish the plaster, that tapered edge helps close it down and compress it a little bit easier than it is so we don't have to muscle it so much. When you have trowels that are not tapered like this one, you kind of ride up higher on the edge of the trowel and uh, you can actually damage the plaster. So here we go, back to this, all right? And it actually flexes a little bit. Um, some trowels have no flex. It's almost like using a concrete trowel. I, don't, I never use those. They're just too harsh, too hard. They're heavy. So after working for about, you know, four or five hours a day, your arm wants to fall off, shoulder wants to fall off. Yeah, I know four or five hours a day isn't a long time to work when you're actually doing eight hour days, but when you're sitting there all day and applying this, you're gonna tear this up and then what happens is it's gonna end up like this shoulder which is almost shot. So, it's not about how hard you work, it's about how smart you work and getting the right prices for doing such labor intensive work. Also, I don't do entire houses at the same time when we're doing decorative plaster. This isn't like doing traditional plaster where we're going in and just plastering all the walls or stuccoing the whole outside, stuccoing the whole outside of the house. And a lot of times it's accent walls. But back to the trial. All right. We have the high quality stainless steel. It has a slight flex to it, trapezoid shape, rounded corners, tapered edges, reinforced, and it has this rubber cushion grip. It's not really a cushion. Um, but it doesn't slip around inside your hand. Some you can get these with a wood handle. I don't care for them. I hate the way the wood feels in my hand. It's just me. I like that little grip on there. So that being said, here's our small. There's the medium. And there's the large. Okay. Now, I tend to use the small and the medium. Very seldom do I use the large. Um, and more, more, most of the time I use the medium size. Depending on what I'm doing, traditional polished Venetian plaster, I will use the medium size trowel. I don't use the large trowel because, well, I just don't, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable using it. And that's simply why. Everybody's different. But traditional polished plaster where it's, you know, one color put on the wall, uh, you compress it, you burnish it, psh, done. Um, Accent walls, I'll tend to use my smaller trowel because a lot of the accent walls have more things going on, different colors, different textures, different patterns. With a small trowel, I have more control over what you're going to see and how you're going to see it. These bigger trowels, when you put the plaster on here, they're big. So you end up tying, using more plaster and you end up using somewhat of a bigger motion. So like white Venetian plaster, if you're doing a nice white plaster, bigger trial is the way to go because you not necessarily don't want the movement of the material you just want to see the beautiful look of the polished plaster but remember what I said earlier about carbon leaving the trial and damaging your plaster that's when we go to this guy it's another Pavant tool this is their plastic trial okay rubber grip plastic and it's not colored plastic it's a natural plastic so there's no color in here that can leach out onto the surface of the wall. 
The only difference is, now this still has that closed or the tapered edge, but it has squared corners. So what I do is when I get it to the warehouse, I'll knock these corners down a little bit with some real fine sandpaper, usually like maybe some, well not, I start out with like a 400, then I'll jump it down to an 800 to get rid of any scratch marks, but honestly, after using it for a few hours, they start to wear down on their own. The other thing about all these trials, these things are like probably sharper than the most knives you have in your kitchen. And the reason for that is, is we're always working on the edge, okay? And the more we're working on the edge, think of it, you're like sharpening a knife on a stone. So we're constantly sharpening this tool. Never touch the edge of this trial. You will need stitches. And unfortunately, I've seen people, when I tell them that in the workshop, tell them that on the job site, actually not usually the job site, but in a workshop, when somebody sees it, for some reason, the first thing they want to do is grab it and they put their finger on it and see how sharp it is. And it goes, I mean, I don't want to talk about it. It creeps me out. But it's a hot, at hot, quick cut, burning sensation. Okay. So there's your three types of trials. They range in price. What I'm going to do is put some links down in the description where you can get them directly off of Amazon. And that way you don't have to worry about trying to hunt them down. They're not cheap. But this one here is probably going on three or four years. This guy has been about here about four or five years because I simply don't use it that often. He's about four or five years and he's been used pretty good. I want to have a draw here about, now the plastic trials, if I do marm, I did a marmorino job down at the International Monetary Fund in Washington DC. I went through two trials on that job alone because the marmorino is a coarse plaster. It's uh, obviously this one isn't that sharp because um, it's not steel. Uh, that marmorino is a heavier plaster and I had it was a very light color I'm talking it was a white base with a pinch of burnt umber in it just to give it a little bit and I went through the wall wasn't even that big that tr wall was probably it was a circular wall nine feet by 12 and there was another section it was about 18 by 10 and I went through two trials on that job I just gr I mean it just ate through the trial because it's plastic it wears down so keep that in mind now, in addition to the trowels, they have the spatulas. And we have different sizes for different reasons. All right? Sometimes I'll use a spatula to get in a little tiny tight areas. Here's a corner of a wall. Here may be a door frame. I'll use it to get in there. Because a lot of times it's just about getting the color in there and be able to burnish it. You don't necessarily need to see all that movement. You just want to make sure it's a consistent look throughout. Pulling material out of a bucket. Not only out of the bucket, but gathering it back up. Remember, as you're applying the plaster to the wall, it spreads out on the trowel. Gather it up, put it back where you want it. There's also different techniques where you'll use these spatulas to apply the plaster. You can even use it to apply the wax. You don't need all of them, realistically. These are the two I use the most. I think this is the three and the four inch. But I do keep this guy handy for tight areas. Uh, that's pretty much it for the tools. Keep them clean, keep them in a toolbox designated for themselves, make sure they don't get beat and banged around in the toolbox because if the edges get nicked and dinged or damaged, your tool's basically worthless. You can try to scrap, sand them out using super fine sandpaper. Never ever put them on a grinder because the grinder's going to get the metal hot, the metal's going to warp, your trial is trashed. It's simple. I have a toolbox, I went down to the big box store, grabbed it, I put a piece of styrofoam in the bottom of the toolbox, I just set my trials inside, and I have some other just scrap pieces of styrofoam, I'll just stick them in there, so they don't move, beat, and get banged around, and that's it, take care of your tools, because that's how you make your money. Good tools help get better results, they become an extension of you, you know, Without, and again, it's always say that the tools are one thing. Without the proper techniques and the knowledge, you can't do a whole lot. Um, you can go out and spend $1,000 on a trial, but that trial is just going to sit there on a shelf or on a job site. And if you don't know what you're doing with it, it doesn't do any good. But you don't need to go get crazy. I think this trial, is that you find these about uh, $50 to $60 in that range, which is a fair price. Remember, it's made by craftsmen over in Italy. comes all the way across that ocean to us. And this isn't a big industry. Uh, you're not going to find people that know how to properly do Italian plasters all over the place. The ones that know how to do it well are busy and they know that it's worth spending the money on the tools. Don't go buy cheap tools. If usually, like this is a cheap tool. Um, I can't remember where this was made. 
but it's a wood handle. What happens is you use it two or three times, the handle gets wet, see these rivets? They don't come through. See those rivets right there and there? So you wash it up a few times and what happens is the wood swells. When then it dries, it shrinks, it cracks right on that rivet and the thing falls apart and it's worthless. This is like 20 bucks. All right, the equivalent to Pavon, I think it was $20, maybe a pinch less. So, oh, and the other thing about these Pavons, the spatulas, I love the rubber handle. They also make a wooden handle and they're less expensive to each their own. I just don't like the wood, don't ask me why. It's usually because the lime dries your hands out. So I'm always washing my hands during the day, get the lime off, I'm putting lotion on. I just don't like that dry feeling. With this, it feels like it's a part Sounds crazy, it feels like it's part of me, it's an extension of me with that rubber handle. I feel I can just feel everything that goes on with it. That's it for the tools. Those are our Provence trials. So we'll just give a quick recap. They make three types in this line. They make a lot of different plaster trials for a lot of different reasons. You can buy so many trials from the same company, you'll go crazy. Um, these are mainly for flat walls. They do make some for beveled walls. I'll show you that in another video. They make all kinds, but for doing basic plaster finishes, traditional plaster, two colored plasters, uh, got layered colors, even so, I'll use them for the textured finishes. Now, that's a good thing I came to that. I have a set of trials that are strictly for fine polished or polished line, which is commonly referred to as Venetian plaster. It's really what's known as polished lime, okay? It's a filtered product, it means it's real smooth like peanut butter. Textured plasters, your Marmarinos, your Travertino, there's so many of them out there and they're all crazy names. They have an aggregate in them. And when you put it on the wall, you'll hear it cr like scrape and crunch. If you watch some of the Marmarino videos or even a Torino video, and even some of the synthetic plasters like uh, Modern Masters texture effects, they're heavy bodied, they're aggregate. So when you go across the surface, it's actually scratching the side of this trial every time it comes into contact with that material and you push it against the wall. I have a completely set of different trials that I use for textures. All the same tools, same company, it's just one's labeled Venetian plaster tools and the other one says texture tools because I don't want to take a texturing trial that's been scratched and the scratches are tiny, you don't even see it, but when you put that smooth polished plaster on, and there's a scratch mark in it, it's like the world just ended that day because it's like, now I gotta fix this. So get the right tools for the right jobs, store them properly, keep them clean, and they're gonna last you a long time and the investment you make in good quality tools will come back to you. All right, that's it. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, and I'll see you next time.